Hi guys, welcome back. In the last video, we built a manual control for our project to control the 16 segment display. Remember, if I press this button here, everything advances in the rhythm of my pressing, okay? There is a last part of the project to build, which is right here, the automatic control. So when we're going to have the project done, not only you're gonna be able to control it manually because this is helping actually yourselves to troubleshoot your circuit, your project, but to check, to check the 16 segment display itself, we're going to use an automatic control. There is no simpler way to build a variable oscillator, but using the old friend, Triple five or five five five. Okay, I'm gonna put here quickly the components, and you just can watch to see how easy it is to build. I'm gonna build it on a separate uh, breadboard, and then I'm going to connect it to our project. Okay, so we pick it up. That's a very easy package to use. Eight terminals, only four on each side. Right here. On the left side is the notch. The purpose of the notch, again, for any integrated circuit, is to identify the pin number one, which is right underneath, right here. This is the pin number one, okay? So now, we plug the circuit anywhere available. If you don't push it, it's gonna jump, okay? So we place the circuit somewhere here, and now take a look how we make the connections, okay? It's extremely easy. The red lines, there is and the positive, and the blue lines here, they represent the negative or the ground. So the positive is on the pin eight. Again, it has eight terminals, one, two, three, four in the bottom, and it continues counterclockwise on the other side, five, six, seven, eight. So I pick up the eight and I connect it to the positive. Now I pick up a black and I connect the ground, which is on the pin one, okay? So the ground is on the pin one. Done. Next thing I'm going to connect is a pin called reset, the pin number four. But because the, uh, the reset for such a package is not that useful if the frequency of the oscillation is one hertz or higher. So we make this pin idle, or in other words, we disable it. And the way we do it is if we connect this pin to the plus five. To the positive voltage because uh, this time is not going to be plus five is going to be the 12 volts we were using for our project okay very important note this kind of package which is pretty old it was designed more than 50 years ago but still in use today it's absolutely amazing i'm going to talk in another video about the, the about the practical use of this package in several forms but now we just make quickly an oscillator. It has a couple of little things I'm going to specify, and one of them is don't ever wire this kind of thing with the power on. So this is why the breadboard is completely isolated from the rest. I can even put the power off for the time we do the wiring. So again, the ground is on the pin one. The positive voltage, which is gonna be 12, is on the pin eight. The reset is on the pin four, but we don't use it right now. We don't leave into the air. We connect it to the positive voltage. Next is the pin five. We also won't use it. It's called voltage control, but we decouple it with a little capacitor to the ground. So from here, I just pick up the closest ground line and I connect it. So I already connected four pins out of eight. It goes very quick. It goes very quickly. So. Next, I'm gonna pick up a resistor. It should be about 10 kilo ohm. This is a bit higher. It's 14, but it doesn't matter. It's working as well. Pin number seven. I'm going to connect it to the positive voltage. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up a second one. Just have to find it is right here remaining in the box. I'm gonna fold it. Okay, 
and this one is going to be the between the pin 6 and 7 but here I'm going to connect it on the pin 6 and then out of the package anywhere because I'm going to connect a potentiometer to it I want it variable so my potentiometer has the beginning on this gray wire and the wiper on the yellow because the potentiometer is going to be used as a variable resistor right now I'm going to pick up these two pins and connecting connecting it on the pin 6 on the pin 6 and the remaining terminal the end of the potentiometer I'm going to connect it on the end of that resistor whose other end goes to the pin 7 so practically the resistor and the potentiometer in series they are connected between the pins 6 and 7 6 and 7 now pin 6 is called the threshold and pin 2 is called the trigger this is where the circuit can be triggered or starting working in an oscillator these two pins we're going to connect them together so 2 to 6 now we have to connect a uh, capacitor so I pick up a brand new capacitor I use a tantalum one because this one has a very very low leakage the positive is on my right so the positive is on the pin 2 and the negative is at the ground but the ground being on the pin number 1 I'm going to connect it directly between the pins 2 and 1 that's the capacitor we're very close to the end so now what's remaining what's remaining is actually the output the output I just want to monitor it before connecting it to my project okay I pick up any resistor between 500 ohms and 1 kilo I connect it on the pin 3 remaining because pin 3 is the output pin 3 is the output and here to the output I'm going to connect in series with the resistor an LED to the ground okay now if I pick up two two wires one red one black I'm going to connect the power to my circuit I'm going to pick it up from the other breadboard and now if I just put the power on my circuit is already oscillating so I can modify the frequency with my uh, potentiometer to go faster or if I turn it counterclockwise to go slower and slower okay so it didn't take that long five minutes you can wire it that's why I always use this kind of uh, 555 for simple projects because there is no simpler way to do a, a variable oscillator however remember that the, the first problem it has don't ever do connections with the power on now is the second thing while you are using it alone just controlling an LED that's all you can do that's nothing else required but when you connect this kind of oscillator to control another circuit like it's going to be the rest of our project another little drawback of this old package is that it propagates on the power lines some oscillations coming from the switching of the two output transistors and we have to try to reduce that interference so how do we do this we're going to connect right across the power supply but not here on the power supply lines of the breadboard right across the power supply lines of the package one capacitor anything between 10 to 100 nanofarad right here across the package and an electrolytic one this one is 10 micro but it can be as well 4.7 microfarad or at least one micro and you are going to connect this kind of electrolytic capacitor it has the negative sign marked by a little arrow so the negative goes to the ground right here let's say and the other one on the positive okay so that's a good precaution to take and a lot of uh, users they forget about that precaution now we're good to go so it's oscillating everything looks fine however my 16 segment display is still controlled by the manual 
of the uh, uh, debouncer for my micro switch. And how do I connect my new oscillator to the project? There is a switch. So the switch is now with one end connected to the manual control. And I'm going to pick up this yellow wire to connect it to the output. Okay. And when I'm going to put a switch on the other position, take a look now, it goes exactly with the rhythm you can see here on the LED. It goes faster and faster, as you can see. Exactly that rhythm, or it can go very slow. And you can watch in the same rhythm as this one, the green uh, LEDs just shifting one after other all the time, okay? So now, after we did all that and everything is working just fine, then we come back to the paperwork. And the reason for the paperwork is not necessarily to show you the 555 because I'm going to discuss this in detail in another video, but I want you to see how to use the switch because the switch is allowing us to connect in turn either the manual control, this is what we've done last time and I put uh, uh, on Google Drive a nicer drawing than this. How do we connect this manual control and our oscillator? So give me two minutes to draw the uh, oscillator here. And then we're going to connect the switch. Okay. So what we have is a very easy package to use. This is our 555 package. And here, in the bottom, we're going to have the ground. And in the top, somewhere here, we're going to have the plus 12 volts. To the ground, we have here the ground of the packages on the pin 1. Here, in the top, we have the pin 8, the VCC. Here, what also we connected to the VCC was the reset, RST, RST. So the reset is the pin 4. We decoupled through a little capacitor, let's say 10 nanofarad. We decoupled the pin 5, which is the voltage control, okay? Then we had here the pin seven, which is the discharge. Discharge. Here somewhere we have the pin six, which is the threshold. Threshold. And here somewhere is the pin two, the trigger. So now, between the positive and the pin seven, there was a R1. 10 kilo ohm. Here between these two ones, we're going to have a resistor in series with the potentiometer. The potentiometer is going to be like this. And here we have the pins 2 and 6 connected together. Is this uh, yellow wire here, pin 2 and 6? And then the potentiometer, let's say 250 kilo ohms. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Sorry, I'm gonna put it here, 10 kilo ohm. This is R2. R2 made by the two resistors here, 10 kilo ohm. I just don't want the potentiometer when shorted to reach the pin number seven to make a short. This is why there is a 10 kilo ohm resistors in series with it, okay? And uh, so this is R2 making the sum of the two resistors. And here in the bottom, we have the capacitor charging and discharging, the tantalum capacitor. I put here a 4.7 microfarad. This is C1, okay? And here is the output. The output is the pin three. To the pin three, I connected the resistor and an LED like this. The resistor, let's say one kilo. 
And now, how do I use, that's the diagram, it's very easy, okay? How do I use this diagram and this one to control our circuit? The way we do this is going to be like that. It's going to be a switch, one leg here, another leg here, and another one here. And this is going to be our toggle switch, toggle switch. And because the last time we only needed to use, we only needed to use the manual control, I connected the uh, manual control to the uh, input of my circuit. Now I don't need this anymore. So we're going to do this. Okay. And now we're going to connect the manual control here on one position of the of the toggle switch. We're going to let me use another color. It's going to be more visible. We're going to pick up the wire from the output and to bring it right here on the other position of the toggle switch, okay? And we're going to connect the common, the common of the toggle switch to the input of the actual diagram to count, remember, 17 positions. So when the switch is in that position, you have manual control, exactly as it was last time, manual control. Okay, when you put the switch in the other position, it's gonna be the automatic control where you can control the speed. You see slower and slower, the speed by the potentiometer, okay? So I'm gonna put a nicer drawing uh, online, but you have manual control here, automatic control here by an oscillator and here is how you can connect the switch to have them in turn controlling our project. We cannot finalize the project right now because I, I'm still waiting for some components. It's in a form of a breadboard working. However, the project is perfectly functional and is working. And uh, to make sure I won't receive the components uh, till the next time, we leave the project like this working just fine. We put it aside and we pass for the next time, we pass to the real jumbo. So be ready for the real jumbo. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.